Hi, so this is just going to be a short accompanying video um, and it's going to be very, very short and it's just, just to get across the idea of, of how bad our system is. Now, it's a debt-based system, okay? So money is issued as debt. It's not issued as currency anymore. It's, it's issued as debt. So every banknote that you have is actually money that belongs to the bank and we just trade with their money they can at any point ask for it back. It belongs to them, okay? Therefore, anything you buy with those trading tokens belong to the bank because even if you accumulate a mass amount of these trading tokens that we call money, they will never belong to you. They belong to the bank, okay? Because it's issued as debt. It all has to be given back, okay? Now... When you are indebted to somebody, okay, what does that mean when you are indebted to somebody? You are intrinsically enslaved to them. It means that you owe them something, therefore you must do something for them to clear your debt. Now, if you have a debt with me for a thousand pounds, now you can clear that debt with me either by giving me a thousand pounds or giving me something in exchange that we agree to that could come to the value of a thousand pounds. But while ever I hold that debt over you, because I could also just cancel the debt if I wanted to, which I probably would for a thousand pounds. It's not very much money. But while ever I hold that debt over you, you are enslaved to me until you clear that debt. Now, if you, if we issue money as debt, and this is, this is some simple arithmetic, okay? If we issue money as debt, so debt is the same as money, yeah? Because that's how we do it. We issue money as debt. And we've also established that debt is the same as slavery, which also logically means that money is equal to slavery. In a debt based in a debt based economy and we live in a debt based economy so while ever you have money in a debt based economy you will be a slave to the owner of that money, which is not you, it's the central bank. I mean, this is how, this is how screwed up our system is. Because we're even told that we should have money. Get more money, more money, look for more money, look for more money, look for more money, look for more money. But if everybody was saving, saying, look for more slavery, get yourself more slavery, become more enslaved, everyone would go, what are you talking about? I'm not going to do that. That's ridiculous. But in a debt-based system, the more money you go after, the more enslaved you are. I hope that's sort of, if you needed shaking to sort of get the idea into your head. That a debt-based monetary system is evil, it's Satan, it's, it's, it's every evil that there could exist. Because it just enslaves you to the will of the owner of the money, which is the private bank. All right. But of course, money itself, and this, this is one of the things that people often say to me. They say, yeah, but you charge money for your courses. Money itself is not evil. Money is just a means of exchange. That's all it is. But like everything, it can be used for good or it can be used for evil. If we have a monetary system, if we have an economic system that instead of being based on debt, is based on value. 
actual positive value, then money doesn't become slavery. And I'll show you how that works. If you, if you have a, a, a value-based system, so value equals money, okay? The more you increase the value of the system, the more money you can have in the system. And I've talked before that increasing value can be increasing goods, increasing services, increasing information, or even increasing human life. The more value there is in the system, the more money you can print. Now value is freedom. The more value something gives you, the freer it makes you. Yeah? So if I, for example, um, I give you a thousand pounds, I've increased your value by a thousand pounds. Therefore, I've increased your freedom because all of a sudden, before the thousand pounds, you couldn't do much, but now I've given you the thousand pounds. You can do more stuff, okay? But as I've talked before, the prerequisite of a, free, of a value-based system, a freedom-based system, is that the money is public. It's not private. So the money doesn't belong to you. It belongs to everybody. So if I give you a thousand pounds to increase your value and increase your freedom, what you have to do at the end of that is you make sure that that money makes it back into public hands. You don't keep it. You see, you don't keep it. You spend it. You see? You see the difference in a... In a in a debt slave based system, we are told to save money and not spend it because it's scarce. In a value based system, money is public and you must, you must spend it. You have to spend it. You have to spend it. In that case, money is freedom. in a value-based economy. Now, I hope, I hope, and, and I, know, I know that the things I'm talking about, not many people talk about, so they're, they're new, and I understand that. And that people, you know, first reaction is, that, that'll never work, because we've, we've always had a debt-based system. We've, it's always worked like that, and we've not died. But the problem is, if we keep going, we will get killed. Spiritually, we will be enslaved. Not maybe not maybe not my generation or my kids' generation, but my grandkids' generation. Certainly, uh, there's a high probability that they will be enslaved to the banking system if we don't chase it, if we don't uh, change it. Now, I've talked before about the 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 water cycle and and how the water cycle is a closed loop, and and a value based economy can be can be. A closed loop economy. Now, and I just want you to, I just want you to um, make a little thought experiment with me here, okay? And, and it, thought experiments are great. And Einstein was famous for doing thought experiments because you actually you're not limited physically in your experimentation because your 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 mind is is not limited, okay? Going back to the to the the water cycle economy, okay, what we would have here is we would have a bank, a public bank. That would have basically an unlimited money supply. Bank. 
public bank. It would literally, it would have an unlimited money supply. Why? Because money can be printed for free. So let's imagine that this bank gives each of us £100,000 a year to spend. Right? Now, it's your £100,000. Why? Because the money is public. But as much as it's yours, it also belongs to everybody else. Okay? So now, with that £100,000, you are free to spend it where you like. So you can spend it on a car. You could spend it on an aeroplane. You know, you could spend it on food. You could spend it on clothes. Now, all of these things that you're spending there, all of the money, although you're spending it here, provided the people that receive that money for the car also spend the money, they don't save it. Now, the thing with this is, with an unlimited supply, money saving, money saving is wrong. Money spending is encouraged. Not only encouraged, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. You cannot hoard the money. You cannot save it. Because this £100,000 that has been given to you must make its way back to the bank. Now, it doesn't matter how many twists and turns this money made on its way back to the bank. It could go through the hands of everybody in the world. But so long as it makes it back to the bank, the money remains infinite because it's just gone in one big circle. And because the money belongs to everybody, you don't have to save it because you just get some more because it's free. And <laughs> it was funny, I was talking about this with somebody else the other day. And uh, I, I mean, I, I always get, I always get the same objections. Oh, well, money can't be free because then we would have inflation and all that kind of nonsense. Inflation is made up by the banking system. Inflation only happens when you inject uh, too much money into a system that isn't prepared to receive that money. Now, if the money system is a closed loop, you don't inject money into the system because the money doesn't need injection. It's just there. It's like the sea. You don't need to inject more water into the sea. The sea is just there. It maintains its level because the water just cycles round and round and round and round and round. So, things that people say to me, oh, what about when I'm old? I mean, how am I going to live if I've not saved any money? What am I going to live on? It's an infinite money loop supply. If you need money, you ask for money. But if the money supply is infinite, the bank can just give you money, like 100,000 a year. It can just give you 100,000 a year for you to spend. You see, but the money needs to be public and we need to change the system. You see, and I know you may be thinking, well, that's never going to change. There are ways to change it. We can do it. It has to be done from the bottom up. It needs to be us. It needs to be the people, the common people, the slaves that claim their freedom back. Because if we go and try and storm the private banks... We're not going to get anywhere. They are well defended. It's not going to happen. So it needs to be a peaceful protest from the bottom up. And what we're going to talk about in future videos is, is how we do that, how we free ourselves from a debt-based money system to a value-based money system and how each of us can contribute value to the system 
Because inherently we are so valuable that, that really, I mean, if, if the value behind our economic system is the value of human life or the value of life in general, which is, I mean, life, how can you put a price on life? You can't. I mean, if I were to ask you right now, you know, how much money would I have to give you so that your life became mine? And I'm not talking about taking your life in the sense of killing you. I'm talking about basically your life would become mine. So you would be enslaved to me forever. You would have to do my bidding forever. How much would I have to pay you? Can you come up with a figure? Can you come up with an amount that I could give you? I bet you can't. I bet your reply to me is, you must be joking. I'm not, it doesn't matter if you pay me 10 million pounds. I ain't becoming enslaved to you for the rest of my life. But the curious thing is, most of us go out to work for that much a month, which our debt masters, our, our, our slave driving masters, deem a fit amount for your life because that's what it is this is what your slave masters are paying you to be enslaved to them and they deem that enough the system is disgusting and we need to change it have a great day guys